Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ever Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and today I want to show you a nice little composition of effects that creates something that I call the Kill Bill effect, even though I'm pretty sure it never actually appears in Kill Bill, but for some reason it kind of reminds me um, of it. Okay, so let's have a look at what we should have when we're done here. As you can see, we're creating something of a blown out, high contrast look uh, with a zoom in and uh, some distortion, plus uh, a colorization, in this case yellow, but you can choose any color that you like. Now this effect is pretty versatile and you can customize all the parameters to create something that looks the way you, you want it to look. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first of all, you have to find a portion of video that you want to have the transition appear. Now I use the portion when he looks up because I think that's a, that's a very nice uh, transition point in the movement. But that will of course be different in your case. Now the transition is five frames long. So from the point that he looks up, I go five frames back and add an edit. So the first thing we do is go to tools, effect palette, time warp and just put a time warp on there. Because we actually want the motion to stop after the five frames. So let's go into effect mode. Go to the beginning, five frames to the right, add a keyframe, have the speed of that keyframe be zero. Now you can see there's a curve and we actually don't want that. So let's change that to shelf. So it stops right at that moment. So next we can trim that clip make it way way longer than it is right now because as it doesn't move we have an infinite length here so the next thing we do is create the contrasty look go to image and drag the color effect on top of the time warp go to effect mode and add five frames into the effect you can see that up there five frames into the effect Add a keyframe, select the last two keyframes because we want it actually to transition into what we're going to do now. So pull the saturation down because we want the image to be black and white at this moment. Open the Luma range and now play with the white point and black point sliders to create the, the contrasty look. Uh, Looks pretty blown out. That's just the way you want it. Okay, something like this. That's that's about all right. And I can see at the beginning it's still totally normal and colorful. And we're going into the contrasty lock five frames into the effect. That's that. Now we can create the zoom. Go to the blend category and optional, I'll drag the 3D warp on top of the color effect. Again, go into effect mode and create a keyframe, five frames into the effect. Select both keyframes and just scale in there. Something like this. And just position the image the way you like it. And if you want to, you can skew the image slightly. Not too much, but a bit. Now only select the last keyframe and scale it even more. And if you like, you can also skew it a bit more. Now this looks actually pretty decent, doesn't it? Now we're almost done. All we need is the color. 
For this, we need video track number two. Create an edit at the beginning of the transition. Go to the image category and drag the paint effect onto video track two. There it is. Doesn't do anything at this moment, but we'll make it do something. <laughs> Go to effect mode, zoom out, draw a rectangle, and change a different mode. Now, the mode that you would naturally think fits best is maybe colorize, but this colorizes the whole image. It's not what we want, doesn't look right. Next thing might be add, but this actually colorizes the dark parts of the image and we want actually the, the, the light parts of the image to be colorized, so we need to use subtract. It looks pretty nice, but the problem is it uses the exact opposite color from what you chose, of course, because it subtracts and doesn't add. So if you want to use the color yellow as I do in this example, you actually have to choose blue, the thing exactly opposite of yellow. But it's actually not that bad. Once again, let's go five frames into the effect and add a keyframe. Now go to the first keyframe, open the mode and drag the opacity slider down to zero. Now we can actually preview this. It's just what we wanted. By the way, at this point, you should definitely have a look at your um, waveform monitor or your vector scope and check the legality of the levels. They are probably not gonna be legal and you'll probably have to adjust the saturation of um, of the color here because it's probably gonna be way 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 too too much color <laughs> for TV to handle. So now let's check what we have. Now oh, that is actually pretty nice. It's even nicer with audio. So let's add a swish. And let's add some music. I chose some music that is licensed under Creative Commons, so <laughs> I won't get sued for using it. And let's check out the final product. Very, very nice, I think. Now again, you can change pretty much everything about this effect, but I think it's a nice starting point uh, to play with. Um, and I hope you like it. And if you do, just tell me. <laughs> Would be very much appreciated. All right, thank you for watching this episode of the Evit Screencast. If you like, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast at uh, iTunes or uh, the website evitscreencast.com. If you have any comments or suggestions like future show topics or anything you, you, know, you think is cool, just drop me a line at mail at evitscreencast.com or just comment on the website or send a Twitter. Uh, so don't forget my Twitter account at twitter.com slash avidscreencast. And uh, also do check out my Facebook page and become a fan. And if you'd like to see what kinds of things I do professionally, check out my website at editguy.de. Once again, thank you very much for watching. See you next week. Goodbye.